Hey guys, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today I'm going to show you how to use F-Port on a RadioMaster R161 to connect to the icon and get telemetry by flashing the F-Port firmware on the 161. So the first thing I'm going to do is flash the R161 over to V2. And this is brand new out of the wrapper. So I'm going to start, we'll just take this out of the wrapper. And the first thing we need to do is take your cable that goes normally would go to your flight computer and we have to make an adjustment. The red pin has to come out of the center because we're going to flash this receiver with the radio. So the red pin has to come out of the center. We'll do that first. Now the objective here is to get the V2 F port firmware. That's what we're after is the V2 F port firmware on this receiver, all right? So there's the red, there's the black, and all we're gonna do is switch them. Super important to make sure before you put this on your receiver that you switch them back, because we're reversing the polarity right now is effectively what's going on, okay? All right, so that's it for, for the receiver side. All I've done is switched the red and, and the black. So I have ground now in the center, and hot here on the left on the opposite side and there's one other thing you need to do we don't really need the blue and purple wires or the purple and green wires so i'm going to just take those off because they're not needed and honestly they're just in my way but it's not a bad idea to hold these um, and because you never know when you need connectors like these if you wind up cutting boy these are really small fiddly wires too okay so we'll just get rid of this purple one We'll get rid of the green one, and all I'm doing is taking a razor knife and lifting the little plastic retaining tab up. There we go. Got those out. Okay, so these wires, we just set them aside because we don't care. We don't need those. Now, there's one last thing you need to do to be prepared to flash, and that's you do the flashing via the S port. So if you look at the receiver, you'll see that you've got negative, positive, S bus, and S port. So we need to use the S port line for the flashing. So all we have to do momentarily is take the yellow and actually we use this in the in the receiver going forward for the connection to the icon as well. So you won't have to reverse this one. So all we have to do now is put this in the second hole from the bottom. All right. This is going to be really hard to see, but I'll try and do my best to get it on camera for you. All I've done is I've moved the yellow wire from that port right there, which is right next to red, and I moved it to the left one slot. So it's, it's right in the center between the three remaining slots, right in the middle one. So one hole away from red, that's where the yellow wire goes. So I have that on there now. Now the yellow pin is, all I did was move the yellow wire over one, and we'll connect that back up to the receiver using the pin out diagram. So the ground, the ground stays where it is, the red stays where it is and the yellow stays where it is on the receiver but remember we flipped them on this side and that's because of the pin out on the radio so next thing we'll do is take the radio and we need to plug this in on the pins on the bottom so our bottom pin is signal so the way this goes yellow on the bottom then black then red okay yellow on the bottom you can see there's my pin out right there, then black, then red. So we'll connect those to the bottom three pins in this bay, bottom three pins. All right, the next thing we'll do is do a search for Radio Master R161 firmware. And you'll, the first link you'll get, will be it'll say support Radio Master. And then what you wanna do is, is look for the receiver and just scroll down and look for the receivers. R161 firmware, it is discontinued, but that's the one we're looking for. So click the down arrow. And that will download the firmware for the radio, uh, for the receiver. Then once you've got that, you click on the zip file and you'll see a bunch of little FRK files in here. The one we're interested in is the V2 F port. In my case, I'm FCC. If you're outside the FCC jurisdiction, you might need to use LBT, but in my case, it's FCC. So that's what I'll use. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is plug my radio in. So let me just do that real quick. You see the radio, you take your USB-C type cable, plug it into the top of your radio, 
And when you do that, you'll be prompted on the radio for HD or SD, the joystick or SD. I want the SD card, so I'll click SD and hit enter. That'll bring a window up on my computer. And when that happens, when that window makes its appearance, eventually, in theory, there it is. So what we want to do is go down to the firmware folder. It doesn't have to be in here, but I like to keep things together. And we're just going to take this 161 V2 F port, F is in Frank, FCC, and we're going to drag it over to our firmware folder. Notice I've already done this, so I'm just going to hit replace the file in the destination. So we'll do that. There's the replace. Okay, now the firmware is on the radio, and that's how we're going to flash the receiver, right from the radio. So we'll disconnect our USB-C cable. We no longer need that. Okay, we've got our R161 connected to the radio. We've got the firmware F port V2 on the radio and the firmware directory on the card. So we'll hit the system button, then we'll hit page right to the SD card, scroll down to firmware, and then look for the one that says R161 V2 F port. When you find that, you wanna long press on the jog dial and hit flash external module. And when you do that, the radio receiver should light up and you should see a status that says writing. You don't have to turn on the external module or anything. Simply go into the system directory just like I did on, under system, then navigate to your firmware folder, long click the FRK file and hit write firmware. So now what we're doing is we're putting the V2 F port FCC firmware on the R161. But when it's done, you'll see flash successful and then hit enter. So now we have F port V2 on the R161. In the model section, we're gonna turn on the internal RF. So we'll turn that on and we're gonna look for FreeSky V2 or FreeSky X2. So not FreeSky RX, not FreeSky X. You want X2 D16. You use X2 when you have a V2 firmware. You use X when you have a V1 firmware. So now that we've done that, the only thing left to do is use the external module to go ahead and power the receiver. So I'm gonna press the bind button on the R161, and then I'm gonna use the external RF to power the receiver. So I'm just gonna turn it on by putting it in XJT mode. So there's XJT. Now we're in bind mode. Now I'll simply go up to the internal module and hit bind, and you should see that green and red light. The red light should start flashing if we get a bind. So I want channels one through eight with telemetry on, and there we go. We've got a green and red flashing light. That means we have a bind. Okay, now, now that we've got a bind, I'm gonna go down to the external RF module and turn this off real quick to reset the receiver. Then I'll use external RF to turn it back on again. So I'm just gonna set it to XJT, and when I do that, I'll hit page left, and I had to, I had Discover New Sensors on, so you can see I already picked up the, the sensors for this radio. So there we go. We've got a bind. We know that that part's working. The next thing to do is connect it to the icon. And I want to go through a couple of wiring steps just to make sure you guys are clear on what to do there. Now remember what I told you. At this point, you have to make sure that if you use this wire, you reverse that red and black. If you connect that red and black, to your flight computer, you're gonna blow it up, okay? So make sure you reverse that back. I'm gonna just set this aside for now because I'll use the one that I have on the helicopter. And here you can see on the bottom, I've already got an R161 with a cable plugged in, and I wanna point out so you can see the wiring. We've got negative on, if you look at it from the, from the top of the receiver with the antennas facing down, I've got black on the left, then red, then we skip one, that's the, the one we're skipping is S bus, and we're using the yellow wire or signal wire on the F port or S port line. This is now an F port line. That's Frank, F is in Frank port line, okay? And then on the top, on the icon, I wanna show you what you have to do there because there's a couple of quick little things you do here. One is you have the same red, black, and signal on channel three. You're gonna use channel three on the icon. The top port is signal, the middle port is red, the bottom port is black. And then the last thing you need to do is right here on channel four, five, and six, you need the white telemetry wire from your Hobbywing ESC set in that middle. I'm gonna pull this out so you can see it. I want you guys to see this one. 
So all I have is a single wire right there on the middle pin. That's pin number five coming from the Hobby Wing uh, ESC. And that white wire terminates right there on the signal line from the Hobby Wing ESC. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you can see that. It's right there. It's the inboard the white wire terminates right there on the inboard pin, right there. Hopefully you can see that. I know that's not great lighting, but that's the best I can do. Okay, so that, that white wire goes on the middle pin, number five, on your Icon fly barless unit. So I've got to pop this thing up again so I can get a look at it and get that back on there. There we go. All right, so my telemetry from the ESC is in. My receiver is connected to channel three, negative on the bottom, positive in the middle, signal on the top, all right? And then we're gonna flip this over. Now here's my current, my current receiver. I'm gonna just disconnect that and I'm gonna plug in the new one. This is the one we just got through flashing. And I'm gonna plug that guy in. And then the next thing we'll do is take a look real quick at the icon. I'd like to bring the icon up so you can see the configuration required for it. Okay, as you can see in icon, the receiver option that I have selected is F port, F port two inverted. The last thing to do is turn on your radio and then connect the battery. And if I go into the radio icon on the icon software, we can see that I've got movement on the aileron channel. And then finally, the last thing to do is look at the radio, click on the models button, press page left, and we will discover new sensors again. And this time when we do this, we should pick up all of the goodies for telemetry. You can see I've got VFAS, I've got the temperature from the ESC, and if I release the rotor, uh, take the throttle lock off and run the rotor up, you should see RPM spool up right here when that head starts to move. There it is, 20, 60, 80, 100, so there we go. We've got RPM data from the icon. Well, there you go, guys. Now you know how to set up F-Port with the icon and get telemetry with the RadioMaster TX16S. You now also know how to flash the F-Port V2 firmware onto the R161 so you can set this up with your icon fly barless controller. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this kind of content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen.